We try to talk about the process of change from a whole bunch of different perspectives. Okay? A whole bunch of different perspectives so you can begin to uh, take a look at things. Maybe one thing won't make sense, but another thing will, right? Uh, today I'm going to talk about something that might not make sense to you today, but maybe in a couple of weeks it will. Or somebody else will do the seminar and it'll, you'll have an aha and it'll click into place. But we try to do them so you begin to become, as we used to say, a student of your own behavior. Or a quote, I can't remember who did this quote, of uh, the unexamined life is not worth living. All right? So I also talked a whole lot about uh, Alice Miller, who was a Swiss psychoanalyst, and her work and how we use that in our curriculum here. And we went over the five psychological stages of most people's lives. Does anybody remember that? Okay. There was five stages that she believed, and it didn't have anything, it didn't matter what family you were born into, she believed it was the five psychological stages of most people's lives, right? To be hurt as a small child, and nobody in your family recognizes the fact that you're hurt. To fail to react to that hurt with anger or some kind of suffering, to show gratitude for what are supposed to be good intentions. The fourth stage was to forget everything, erase it, like it never happened. And then the fifth stage, act out all that stored up energy onto yourself or others in your adulthood. Okay, so you just act out. For most people in this room, most of us, right, we acted it out, you know, and our addiction was part of that, right? Some people act it out. They don't use drugs, but maybe they become a workaholic, all right? It manifests, is the fancy word, it makes itself known and shown in your adult life. It's almost like... Uh, you know, you are what you eat, <laughs> okay? You know, that was a big saying in the 60s. You are what you eat, okay? Everybody in here is sitting on a pile, all right? This is your life, okay? You're sitting on a pile of your life experience, all right? And what do we know? This is our personal history. If you don't examine history, what happens? It could repeat itself, right? You can learn from your own personal history. So we have, today we're going to go, just to trampoline forward a little bit, we're going to talk about social atoms, what those are. But I would really like you as a student, if you could, okay, start memorizing these stages and then they're a key. You work them, and you'll get a handout with these again. I'm going to keep giving those stages out, right? You work it backwards, okay? You start from how did you act out all this stuff, okay? And you work it backwards, and it might help you, all right? It might help you. It might change something about you. Because just like those family maps, we want to interrupt destructive cycles, okay, interrupt it. And those family maps, I got to keep saying this, I said this somewhere in another one of the talks Saturday was, you know, some were very interesting. A couple of people I helped us with, right, and just in terms of looking, because we went back one generation, all right? And then you could weave, all right, particularly if you're a First Nation person, you could weave all the historical trauma right into that family tree. All right, but some were startling, like on the paternal side of one person, man, total alcohol from grandpa all the way up to that person and their children, alcoholism. All right, on the other side, it was almost the extreme opposite, right? Nobody used, but everybody was, you know, workaholics and whatnot, okay? 
Uh, so you could start seeing patterns. If you're, how many of you have kids in this room, right? Okay. So you could interrupt the cycle in your own family. You can interrupt it with your own children. All right? The chances that, of a child that uh, has a parent incarcerated, their chances skyrocket of them being incarcerated. It's one of the single biggest predictors. Okay? It's not a given law. It doesn't mean like, well, mom was in prison, dad was in prison, you're going to go to prison, but... It's a big, huge indicator. At least that's all what the research shows. Same with alcoholism, drug addiction, violence, et cetera, et cetera. So the Alice Miller paradigm is a pretty good thing to start looking at if you're in, interested in, into breaking these the cycles. Okay? And you get, you know, remember this, this uh, if this little, this is another diagram you should be really kicking around in your lodges, right? If this spiral represented your life, okay, and it keeps going, right? Life keeps going, all right, until you run out of time. Everybody has stuck points, okay? Everybody has stuck points, right? <coughs> so who's one of the young children here? Give me a name that everybody knows. Serena, blessing, right? Okay, they're right here, all right, in their journey, right? They're right here, man, okay? They're young, you know, they're coming out of Toddlerville. They're starting to explore the world, and depending upon their environment and the adults in their environment, they start learning, right? Okay, and they could learn things very, very well, all right? We all started out right here. I don't think any of us beamed in, you know, like the Immaculate Conception or something. We all started as little infants, okay? So this thing goes around. You come to Amity, all right? You enter your world of addiction, okay? And let's say this is one of us, okay, or you. You get to Amity, okay? We'll put maybe right here, okay? That was a big threshold you crossed over. Okay? The best thing you've ever done for yourself, probably, whether you feel like it or not, is when you crossed over the threshold to come into this community. All right? Smart move on your part. Okay? We all know people that didn't get that chance. Right? They're in, they're in the penitentiary doing a long bit. They're dead. Okay? Or in the, they're in the sanitarium, you know, the, the hospital somewhere. All right? They didn't get this chance, but you crossed over this threshold. All right? At some point on your journey here, okay, as you're, you know, no matter what your agenda is, all right, you're going to hit what we call a stuck point. Right? A little, you could look at it as a wall or a threshold. That's the part of the doorway that you step through, right? Every door has a, has a threshold, okay? In our addiction, we went through, you know, door number three, okay? Right? And it's kind of hard to get out of that friggin' room, all right, in doing that. You'll hit an emotional stuck point here. You'll hit a point in your process where it's like, Whatever you've done your first 30 days to get through the next 30 days, you got to keep adding on new things, new challenges, new things to talk about in groups, all right? Or you will get stagnant. It's like you were sitting in a, a nice, warm, bubbly bath, right? And it felt really good at first, okay? But, you know, you sit in a bath for a couple of weeks, it starts to suck, right? The water's cold, all the bubbles are gone, you know? So you got to add some fresh water, okay, <laughs> to that thing, man. All right? And you push through it. And this circle, you know, gets a little bit larger, okay? If you don't push through it, you snap back, okay? And you stay stuck in this little area of your life 
which is probably our addiction, doing the same thing, right? Build your life up, tear it down. Build it up, tear it down. Until you learn how to, what's another, you know, uh, like it's like threading the needle, okay? Until you get that thread through the eye of the needle. And sometimes it's tricky, sometimes it's, it's frustrating, okay? You know, uh, it, it's sad. I'm going to use, I won't use his last name, but I'll use his first name, Kevin, okay? I've known Kevin since 20, 2010, all right? 2010. He always hits a stuck point, bounces out of here, ends up drunk as a skunk somewhere up north, living in the street, in and out of jails, in and out of hospitals, then he'll call for help. He'll come back, he'll hit this same stuck point, bail out of the friggin' process, forget whatever promises he's made, and the whole pattern repeats itself, okay? I'm mentioning him because you guys know him. Anthony's another one. Watched him do this multiple times, okay? I did this multiple times, all right? thinking I could outfox the process of change and bam, destroyed everything I was building up until I learned the lesson. So I just want to share this. It isn't really like the bulk of this seminar, but it's a really good thing to start talking to each other about because every single person in here from the newest person in the door, you're going to hit these, okay? And you're going to enter a zone of you know, like they say in 12-step, you, know, you know, our addiction's cunning and baffling, man. Okay? We all have that, that little part of ourselves that, that we kind of bull poop ourselves. All right? Into buying our own poop. Okay? And we'll have good intentions in our heart. Our, heart, our intentions will be pure and honest and strong, but we're just not quite there yet, okay? It'd be like blessing saying, Mommy, I want to drive the car today. No, I don't, no, I can do it. I can do it. Give me the keys, give me the keys, give me the keys, right? And if their mom, God forbid, gave them the keys, they would crash that car, okay? They couldn't even see where they're going, all right? They, they wouldn't be able to drive the car very well. Okay, on and on. So think of these stuck points, because you're going to hit them. Now, all the Alice Miller stuff and this family stuff we're studying related all this to the, the fancy word, you know, in psychology is interjection. All the dynamics we, we basically swallow when we're little, and it becomes part of our hardwired responses. Okay? all that type of stuff, right? Now remember, the, 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 another way of looking at it is imprinting. All this, okay, you know, if you run through these cycles again, right, a small child interjects, imprints, internalizes everything in its environment. And when you're little, okay, let's say, you know, uh, is Valerie in here? Or Don? No, since we're using their kids as an example. Okay, let's say, right? They're having a bad day. Okay? And they go home, and little Zarina or Blessing are minding their own business, right? Okay? And they do something minuscule, but because mom or dad is having a bad day, right? The, the wrath of hell comes down upon that child. All right? That child is going to totally think they're a bad person. Now, they don't have a clue that mom might be having a bad day or dad, or that mom's drunk or dad's drunk, okay? Or mom had got her feelings hurt or dad got his feelings hurt, right? And all the stuff that goes on in families, right? But that little kid personalizes it. They take it right into them little selves, Okay? And doing that. And they swallow 
everything because you can't question the adults. What happens if you question an adult in, when you're little? Can anybody give an example? You're reprimanded. Right? Can anybody think when you were little of being treated unjustly? Getting in trouble for something you didn't even do? Right? Maybe a brother did it, a sister did it. Or maybe you were minding your own business. Right? Okay? How many of you grew up in an alcoholic family? or drug-addicted family, okay? A lot of people. So it's a totally chaotic environment, right? It's unpredictable. You don't know what's going on, and it's not safe. Okay, all of this stuff is worth uncovering. But according to her, or you could relate it to this, it starts repeating in patterns. We repeat, repeat, until we learn the lesson, until we figure out how to thread the eye of the needle. You know... I've been helping out people. I mean, I love this work because I learn something new every week. It's never boring, man. All right? But I've also spent 38 years watching people hit stuck points. And for the men, this is to the fellows in the room, the, the, the biggest one to overcome in the beginning, all right, in the initial 90 days or so or 60 days, is having... Building sanctuary in that lodge where you could be emotional. That is a huge stuck point for us guys, okay? Um, that is a huge, you know. The women are ahead of the game, okay, in terms of that. But we're conditioned not to be emotional. We are conditioned on many levels. That's a whole other talk. But that's usually a huge stuck point because... You know, you're here for a month or two, you're conscious, you're sober, you're in all this curriculum, okay? If you're not running your story emotionally right, somebody else is, okay? You're pretty much emotionally homeless, and bam, big wall, okay? Big wall, all right? And I know this is true for the gentleman I mentioned at the beginning of this thing, right? I know there was some issues surrounding death that totally affected him, okay? With survivor's guilt, the loss of a brother, and he could never go beyond that stuck point, man, all right? And we are equipped from the factory, hang tight, Corey, we are equipped from the factory to shed emotions. I don't know who made us like that, all right? I don't know who made us like that, but, we're, we, you know, it kind of differentiates us between, you know, people and animals, all right? So usually stuck points, the first one are, are you know, and it's not easy, okay? Because we're conditioned to, you know, it's like, well, if you show emotion, you're weak, all right? And you definitely aren't going to drop your, you know, you're not going to go up to another man and say, hey, will you help me? Okay, that's, that's, that's like a thousand mile walk for some guys. All right, might sound easy, but it's not, right? So that's kind of a stuck point, right? Another stuck point is like you're conscious of your story the more you, you sober up and say, well, man, should I say this in here? I don't want to say what I've done to other people because then people won't like me. I want, everybody wants, you know, you're trying to, to bond with the group. Okay? <clears throat> right? You don't want to lead out there with your sins. Oh, let me show you my dirty laundry. But, you know, if some guys are here ahead of the game, right, have been here for a while and they're talking about theirs, it's like, okay, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. And all that type of stuff. Okay, so it's all about honesty. Honesty. That's, that could be another. Some can't get through it. All right? Some, some can't commit. So we'll do a whole other thing on stuck points. How many of you know what a social atom is? John, what's a social atom? A social atom is a little sphere of people we have around you. Okay. Right? 
It's the most blaze, you know. What makes up nuclear power? Atoms. These things you can't even see. Right? These little building blocks. Very, you can't see it. They're powerful. Okay? They produce energy. Right? And social atoms is what John said, and I'm going to elaborate on it a little bit. You know, they're, they're the uh, people that have, they could be alive or dead. They could be animals. Right? They are the f- folks, we'll use people to keep it simple, right? Um, that are closest to you in your little universe. If this is you, okay, right? They're the, who you have the strongest emotional attachment to, possibly. Or they have a big effect on you, right? Right? There might be a financial attachment, okay? They're connected, you're connected to them over finances or something, right? It's all, and usually you narrow it down to, you know, five, okay? We're going to draw these out. That's what the paper's for. And I'll give you some examples, okay? On terms of who you're the most connected to, right? If we were interviewing a new student, it'd be like, look, we're going to draw this out, okay? Who are the five most significant people in your life right now, okay? And if you can't narrow it down to that, just put the most significant people, write it out on a piece of paper, okay? Would you put them, if this is you, right? And let's say you're super close to your mom, you draw her close, right? You know, maybe you're a little further away, you got a brother, you know, maybe you got a wife, all right? You try to do, you try to come up and say five. And you'd write this down, you'd bring that to your lodge, and you would introduce yourself to the lodge using your social atom. Using that social atom, the people that you're connected to, Right? Some people go, well, I know 20 people in my life. I got seven children. All right? But if you honestly assess it, say, okay, but who are you significantly tied to? Who's your favorite out of the seven? Every parent has a favorite. Okay. The first page, right? It shows an example of a drug addict social atom. Okay? So I want you to think about, all right, if this is you, okay? So this one shows for a guy, right? You got your crime partner. Okay, you got your homeboys, maybe, you know, a particular one or two. You got your connection, your dope connection. All right? You probably, you know, if you're a guy, you probably have, maybe, not always, a woman, okay, is in her and in there somehow, all right? That's just four, right? It's on the first page, okay? So if you think about when you're out there, I call it the mix. When you're in the mix, who you're mixing it up with the most It's not too complicated, right? It's who you're interacting. You know, if you think back to when you're using, it doesn't matter what your chemical is, right? Who's in that little, that little circle? Some isn't even this big, all right? Some isn't even that big. It, it, it might be two people, okay? For some people, it might be you and the connection. Totally isolated. Totally. Right? But I want to take a second on one of those blank pieces of paper, and we have more. Right? Yeah, we got more if you need more. Just, this is for you. So this isn't going to be published anywhere. I want you to just take a minute. Who's in your, 
when you're out before Amity, who's in your social atom? On the negative side, right? Okay? Now, if you're doing your dirt from your mom's house, your mom might be in there, or your grandma, just to put that out there. Okay? So just take a moment. Now, for some people, and this gets really really tricky if they're family, right? Okay, like if you got brothers you're using with or parents you're using with, okay? And then all of a sudden you quit using, what's going to happen? They might, they might not drag you back in, right? Because they are family, like, hey, good luck, man. More power to you. Or he might be perceived as a threat. Okay? Right? Because you take, if you're changing, especially if it's a parent, right? I, 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 my wife and I were, we weren't like legal foster parents, but we took in a young lady, Yolanda, when she was a teenager for a couple of years. Her mom was on the run uh, and was an active heroin addict, right? But Yolanda actually outgrew her mother. You know, it was a complete role reverse. She was the mature person in the relationship, right? And it was very confusing for her, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, okay? Very, very confusing, right? So part of the shift for everybody, okay? You know, if I drew mine up from way back when, you know, there was a gentleman, I'll, I'll call him J.J., Right? We were very tight. It was negative, but we were like brothers, man. That was sanctuary. We've been through thick and thin with each other. Right? And it was like when I changed, I had to cut him loose. That was not easy to do. Right? Especially when I didn't have a new social atom yet. I didn't have a JJ replacement, okay, in the positive end of the spectrum. Does that make sense? It was hard to let go, right? It was, it was a process, and we've been through war and peace, okay, on that. So it's good to take a look at this, and then the next question is like, okay, and again, I'm talking to those, some of you in this room don't, you know, it, it gets harder the younger you are, right, because you still think you've got another run in you. You know, when you're in your 20s and stuff, or you're going to just switch. Well, I'm not going to do meth, but I'm just going to drink Michelob or something, right? Okay, or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do any more crack. I'm, I'm just going to do, you know, Percocets or something. But, you know, for those of you that really want to change, part of, you know, in Adamity, we teach total abstinence, okay? Like, Learn how to get in a position to enjoy life because you're equipped to be happy. You just have to uncover it. All right? You're equipped to live a good life. You just got to, you know, like our philosophy says, quit being true to yesterday's realities. All right? So part of this is building a new positive social atom. I'm getting a little bit ahead of the game, right? But you can't build a new one until you cop out to the original one. Okay? And see, like, well, who can I still keep around? And who, who do I got to kind of, well, you know, maybe you got to go out here a little bit, brother. Okay? And I'm going to, this is going to be, you know, something else on the positive, right? A sponsor or something. Okay? It's very confusing when it's family. All right? It's not, you know, like words on a whiteboard, but it can be done, and I've witnessed it being done. I haven't personally had to go through that. Okay? with blood relations, but I've witnessed thousands of people that have traveled that journey over the years, okay? Save this stuff, okay? You might think it's corny. When you're here, you're in school, all right? So you should have a binder in your room where you're saving some of this stuff, right? Or keep your own notes if you have a little aha moment, okay? Or insight or... Something gets triggered, okay? The next one's real simple. It just shows an isolated, unhealthy 
social atom, about as small as it could get. Right? That would be an adult whose only relationship is still with mom. Okay? Or it could be dad. Right? It could be dad. Okay, very small. It's closed. Okay? Remember, in terms of the world of, of relationships of any kind, you know, healthy ones are open systems un, that are inclusive. Unhealthy ones are closed systems. Very exclusive. Nobody could get in. Right? Those are unhealthy systems. Okay? So that second one just shows like a person closest thing, you know. And then we're not talking about a child now. We're not talking about Blessing and her mom, right? This would be if Blessing was in her 40s, okay? And, the, you know, the only person in her life was Dawn. It would be a little, something would be a little out of whack with Blessing, okay? And Dawn, because she won't let go, you know, and let Blessing be an adult, right? So that was just an example of a super small one. Very, very small, all right? And there's no, there's no room for anything else, okay? Anything else. So, you know, and a lot of it, just to say this, I don't know if I already said this, um, a lot of this family stuff, you could relate it to, you know, the systems, right? And gravitational pull and orbiting around, like, you know, just to go back to the family thing, a little bit, not to confuse people. In an alcoholic family, the alcoholic, okay, let's say dad's an alcoholic, right? The whole family is forced to orbit around that alcoholic. There's no escape. It sucks all the energy of the family, right? It just sucks out all, you know, the energy of the family when they're, you know, or a drug addict. Okay? Okay, because some of you come from second, third generation substance abuse. All right? And are struggling to, to break the cycle. So they tie up a lot of time. When I was using in my family, right, shooting dope as a teenager, okay, when I was 15, man, I sucked up all the energy in my family. All right? My parents were so like, what is he going to do next, all right? What is it? He's in juvenile hall. He's stealing guns. He's doing burglaries. He's running away from home, right? All my adopted parents, you know, went to, what is Mark going to do? Oh, there he goes again. He just lit himself on fire. Okay, we got to go put it out. My brother didn't get any attention, and he was kind of doing the right thing. All right, my youngest brother, Steve, he's nine months younger than me, all right? My sister, Carolyn, who's five years younger at the time, she was, the, you know, the favorite, right? So she did get some attention. But, man, I was, I was ODing, waking up in hospitals, police coming to the house, so it was spectacular, right? So that's another flip on this family. You know, how much were you sucking up your families, Right? Okay, if you think about, not to embarrass anybody in here, but, you know, think about how much worry, Adam, you put your mom through, right? Okay? Some would say it's hostility, right? I wasn't trying to do that on purpose, but I was a pretty pissed off kid, right? Just pretty pissed off in general. I didn't know why till I came here. Okay, until I started sitting in groups. So anyway, whatever that family system is, it's like a little social atom. Like if you drew one for yourself on that scratch paper, okay, right, if you drew a circle for you, where would you put your biological father? Wait, what was it again? 
okay? Where would you put, I'm into dads because I just found my birth father like 10, 11 days ago, right? It's just totally blown my mind doing these seminars with you guys and all this type of stuff, right? But where would you, if you drew this, Eric, this is you, where would you put your biological father? Would he be close? Would he be way up in the corner? Right? Remember, these lines symbolize the emotional attachment. They could be alive or dead, too. Right? So dad's kind of a key. He wouldn't be here without him. <laughs> okay? He had his, right? Okay? I don't know my birth dad from, you know, apparently he, he's, I got a gazillion half-brothers and sisters. This guy was like, he should be called Johnny Seaman or something. Okay? <laughs> I mean, he's, I got, I'm finding, I got half-brothers. Another one contacted me this morning, right? He's, this guy, four marriages, affairs in every marriage, you know, just like planting his seed, man, okay? So we're, we're not real close, but I looked at the picture. I said, dang, man, <laughs> okay? I saw me looking back at me, all right? So it's kind of important and I noticed when we did the family maps with the guys, dad was like, well, what's his birthday? I don't know. Well, where is he? I don't know. Okay. Well, I said, you, you should know. All right? There is some kind of a connection. But where would you put if you took a moment? Right? Danielle, where would you put yours? Where? Far corner, right? So he's part of that. He's part of the map. Part of the map. Okay. Let's do it. This won't be real long, you guys. So don't, it's not going to be like last week. So hang in there. You're doing good. All right. So let's get the scratch paper. How would you draw one under the age of 10? Let's do it from the emotional attachment this time. Under the age of 10. This should be something that I said at the beginning of this seminar. This is something we should introduce just like we are with some of the newer folks in this room right now. This is something you should get busy doing as soon as, you know, your first day here. <coughs> like, okay, who's in your life, right? If I was a demonstrator, okay, I would want to know like, okay, Welcome to Amity. Welcome to our lodge. Who are the five most significant people in your life right now? Okay? Because that's who we got to include in this, right? If they're going to be part of your life. They need to be educated in how to help you stay sober. All right? And then we got to look for the next level, right, with that is like, okay, is anybody an enabler in that? Do they enable your insanity? Or are they an advocate? Okay, or are they an advocate for you doing the right thing? All right, and on and on and on. This is a good little exercise for if you've been... Okay. Giselle, how long have you been here now? Eight months. All right. Corey? Seven. Seven. Lupe? Not long enough. Oh, ten. <laughs> ten months. Okay. So this is a good, this is a good exercise for you to do. Okay. Say like, all right. Who's in my social atom now? What does it look like? All right? Who are the five? Okay? Right? So remember, I'm going to get this little commercial in here since I do spend time listening to some of you, right? This is about in healthy families. Okay? In a healthy family, when that child's growing up, especially when they hit adolescence, right? You're not a 
a, a full-grown man or woman and you're not a little boy or a little girl. You're in between, right? That adolescent wants input into the family, okay? And in a healthy family, they let that adolescent have some input, all right? In an unhealthy family, something else happens, okay? It's like, no, 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 right? Like my dad would say is, you know, this is my castle, I'm the king. If you don't like it, there's a front door, okay? But when you're living under my roof, it's my ball game, all right? There was no room for input, all right? In a healthy family, you got, in, you got right? Now, some parents don't want their kids, they don't want them to grow up. They keep them down. Part of this process here is forming adult relationships, and you can't go back and be a small child with your family. You have to reunify and rearrange the relationship, Alyssa, all right, into an adult relationship. All right? That takes maturity and a lot of work, okay? When I was growing up, remember, I came to Amity, I was you know, 25, okay, so I didn't come in like this, all right, with, with gray hair and, you know, and wow, I started learning some simple psychology and, you know, in these groups and I was getting in touch and I was apologizing, making amends to the family and all that torture I described earlier and, right, and I thought the whole family was going to be transforming because I was, right? But it was still the emotional Sahara Desert, all right? No matter how much I wanted to go there to get a drink of water, not much really had changed, okay? I couldn't change my family. I tried, to, I couldn't do it, all right? I just couldn't, I couldn't dance that dance. They came to a couple family groups. They hated it, and, but it was a journey. It took years, okay? They had to get honest too. All right? It's a two-step dance, three-step dance. You, they got to dance back. Okay? But we want people to grow up here, right? And form adult friendships, right? And reunite with their families from the adult position. All right? Some families are very good at that. Some aren't. They want to keep Junior, even though now he's 42, okay? in the same child position, in that same childlike position, all right? So this is connected to the family stuff and building a, you know, everybody I pointed out that's been here for a half a year or so, hopefully some of this might have a brother, sister, family member, or some adult friends, okay? Some adult friends that you socialize with and have fun with and all the things you're learning about that go into the composition of friendships, okay, that we try to teach. So these are just good to look at. They're good little tools. They might help you instead of just talking off the top of your head in a group, right, and kind of free associating, which is cool. You could do that in groups too, right? Just ramble on. You don't have to make sense. You know, just let it flow and get it out of your head. You know, uh, or you could bring this and do what Sam just did, right? Hey, this is me before Amity, or hey, this is what my little family history looked like at this age, then it kind of flipped over to this. Now it's, right? It, now it's a different spot. But you can't go back and relive your early childhood, all right? You can't go back. I always tell people, you can't go back to a former state, man. Because that former state got you using. You got to find the third position. You got to get to a spot you've never been before. Right? That's why therapeutic communities took the, you know, it's about rehabil it's about habilitation. There's no R-E in it. Okay? There's no RE, man. You're getting to a point you've never been before. Okay? 
Really, if you want to get it down, you know that recovery word's a bad word. Recovering from what? You're trying to get to an adult, healthy, self-actualizing position. You're trying to be growth-motivated versus deficiency-motivated. That's the fancy verbiage. So you start doing these simple little graphs. You know, for you. You start saying, okay, self, yeah, what, who is in my life, right? Okay? You could take this back to the seventh grade. Who was your social atom in the seventh grade at whatever school you were going to, right? And just see, like, God, are any of those people still in your life? Are they alive? What are they doing? You know? What happened to that best friend and, you know, way back when? No, we've had people, their most, part of their social atom was their probation officer, right? <laughs> we've had adults here where they've had, they started with the person at, you know, Adobe Mountain, right? Then they got them on their adult caseload, okay? Then they had, said, man, I've, I've known this kid since he was 14, right? A significant, a significant, you know, might not have been a loving relationship, right? But a significant, a significant relationship. All right? So, thank you for your attention.